So let's open up the course <coughs> web page and uh, take a look at the topics that we are going to go through <coughs> and see where we are standing. Kind of re quick talk about what we've learned down to this point, and then we're going to continue after that. All right, so <laughs> first, uh, thank you very much for feeding me with all these nice stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna <clears throat> have lots of energy going home. <clears throat> um, let's go to weekly schedule. So we talked about types, calculation, expressions. We understood what operators are in C, and we said C operators, they, uh, you have to go through all, um, all the text that you see over here, it's extremely important you do so, okay? Uh, because when I'm talking about something, I cannot literally go through every single thing that you see up there. The difference between college and everywhere else like that is that you need to study yourself and then come with questions and come here and ask me like, oh, that, that didn't work, this didn't work, this worked. Oh, I read this over there, you didn't talk about it. So uh, yeah, so just kind of fill in the blanks and see if there is anything missing and then we'll go through it. We are currently in week uh, five, right? So we are still in logics, and we're going to um, talk about it and, and uh, have uh, all different um, um, statements that we can write and see to make decisions with. Okay, we already talked about if statement. We talked about if else and understood how we can have a selection of one out of many uh, or none out of many. Um, and um, so it's better to say uh, one out of many or none or one out of many. Okay, uh, we could have that selection done with if else statements. Um, we understood how we can write a loop statement. Uh, and we explained that when you're writing a loop uh, for repetition, the while loop, uh, that's enough for everything. So you can write everything with a while loop. But if you do not want to go through the typing and write everything in a, like a combo, you can use a for loop. For loop works exactly like a, a while loop, but the difference is that you have all the variables and repetition and stuff that you want to have right at the beginning so you know exactly how many times are, are you're doing. And we said we have a do while loop uh, that is exactly like while loop, but what happened is that they moved the condition to the end of the uh, to the end of the repetition cycle, to the end of the, the scope. Therefore, a do while loop for sure happens at least once. A while loop may never happen. A for loop may never happen. If the condition goes false right at the beginning, nothing inside will happen. But a do while loop at least happens once. Uh, and we're going to continue now right after that and go into uh, different aspects. So there is um, another type of, um, there is another type of decision-making statement. Uh, we call that a switch statement. Now we'll, we'll take a look at it in a second. Unlike if statements that they work with logical operations, in an if statement, what you have is something like uh, a condition that you write. So you have a value, whatever the value is, <clears throat> and then you can check that value against something which makes the condition either true or false. So when this condition goes either true or false, the body of the, of the if statement either happens or not, depending on the truth or falsehood of the condition. That's how all these things work. Repetition works that way. You have a statement over there that is checked for its validity to see if it's true or false, and because of that, the thing keeps repeating until the condition goes false. So, and we said truth or falsehood when we are dealing with falsehood. What is falsehood in C language? Zero. What is true? Not more than one. Non-zero. It could be minus 0 0.001. 
that's still true. Anything that is other than zero, that is true. With switch statement, that is not the case. Switch statement checks for equality only, which means in a switch statement, I can check and base on my uh, on certain value, I can execute few things based on a value being something or not. For example, talking about grades, let's say we have A, B, C, D, and F, and I want to do something based on the on this, the value that I have. So I'm going to say, uh, uh, for example, something like, so that's a character CH, or let's call it grade. And in here, I'm going to say printf. What is the grade? Or enter the grade. And I do a uh, uh, grade being equal to get care and I receive a character for it. And obviously, because I don't want anything, because we know, we know that all the information entered through keyboard, another review, all the information entered through keyboard ends with pushing the enter key. And we know the code for enter key is backslash n, so no matter what you enter, you always have a backslash n left in, in the keyboard. For that, we wrote a logic called flush. Okay, so flush the key. So <clears throat> from now on, all those useful things, I'm going to put it actually in a file called utils.c, and I'm going to carry it around with me. So this is what we created last time. We created flush key, and we created that get in thingy, the foolproof one. Um, anybody knows when is the, the workshop due, part two? Wednesday? Okay. So Wednesday, okay, so I'm not going to, uh, I wanted to complete this and fix it, but if I do that, then I'm giving you the answer. So I'm not going to do that. After Wednesday, we're going to use it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to say, okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to make this thing work so nothing garbage afterwards can be in, then I wait a minute, <laughs> Wednesday. So, <clears throat> so, not it's actually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because it can be two days late, right? So we'll do it after. So. So I'm gonna, I want to use this flush key, and so I'm going to bring it over here. So I will copy the, oh, and the mistake that I made over here is this. In C, we have, we have to always put void. Um, I, this is a bad habit that you have to correct me over and over. I come from C++. Because of that, in C++, when you come to C++, you'll see it's exactly like C language. But the, the, the minor differences over there, one of them is that if you don't want to pass anything, you just leave it empty. In C, you have to put void. Okay? So I forget. Please remind me of it. Okay? So, and, yeah. So that's that. So that's uh, a void over there. And you get this uh, prototype, and you add it where you want to use. That's going to change today. Okay? Um, yes. Uh, on a C++ compiler, no. On a C compiler, it means something that is too rich for our blood at this moment. So always put void in C language. The default is not void. If you leave it empty, it doesn't mean void. It means something else. So don't, don't leave it. In, because we are using Visual C++, that C++ compiler, um, I don't know if on GCC it actually gives you an error or not. Try it on Linux and see if you you got to have to. It's possible that you don't get an error, but trust me, it means something different than void. Okay? So just put the void for now and accept this humble request of mine. Okay? <laughs> All right. And remind me of it whenever you see I forgot to do it. So <clears throat> I'm going to add the prototype of a flush key over here, and I'm going to say void. Uh, I'm going to say over here flush. key. Obviously, when you call it, you don't put the void over there, only when you're defining it. So I got that one. Now I want, based on the value of that character thingy, I want to actually do different things. So if I did it with if statement, I have to say, because there is no greater or less than, I want to check for A, B, C, D, and F. So in here, I have to say if ch 
uh, sorry, grade is equal to A. Then I'm going to say uh, printf, say very good or excellent. <coughs> Yeah, excellent. And in here, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say else else if grade is equal to B. Then in here, I'm going to say printf very good. And so on and so forth. You know that. C, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK. For D, I'm going to say work harder. And in here, I'm going to say, you need to improve. OK, so uh, work much harder. OK, so and this one is going to be else. And I do not need to put an F, assuming that, uh, assuming that uh, these are the things that we have. So, and I forgot to put the semicolon over there and semicolon over here. Sometimes when you want to copy something to make things fast, you just make an error and you actually copy that error over and over. <clears throat> so, so that's my program. So when I write, when I run this program, you know exactly what happens. Uh, in here, one of many will be chosen. And if none of those things are added, yada, yada. So any problem now to this point? Yes. That is if they are the same. So question of equality is two equal signs. To set something is equal sign. So if you want to set the grade to something, that's equal. If you want to check to see if it is equal, that's two equal signs. So two equal signs is a question. OK? So run it. My output is there. So I'm going to put over here B, and it's going to say very good. We are OK with that, right? So for cases like this that we have equality checked, equality checked, we can use what we call a switch statement. Because you are literally switching to the values. You are not checking ranges. You are based on a value, you are switching from one to another. So what we do over here instead of this, so this is in here, um, A, uh, if else. So instead of doing something like this, you write, Switch. And as you do switch, it shows you the default thing for switch. So in here, I'm going to say switch based on the value of grade. So I'm going to say switch. Then in here, I'm going to say case A. And that's a column. Then in here, you say break. And you repeat that for every single thing that you want. B, C, D, and the fault over there is going to be anything else. And then, again, I copied the error over and over. All right? And then, A 
again I forgot another semicolon and at the end is that now for all those people who have prior knowledge of C language this is the only place you're allowed to use the statement break in C language nowhere else you're allowed to use it if you know anywhere else that you can use it, I'm not going to even teach it because it's been abandoned 40 years ago 35 years ago okay along with things like go to and continue nobody uses them anymore okay that create what we call a spaghetti code a spaghetti code is where logic jumps from a statement to a statement back and forth and you cannot follow the logic okay so you are not allowed to use break anywhere else other than inside a switch state So, this is how a switch statement works. When you actually enter something, and the program runs three years later, hopefully, and the program runs. So, let's actually go through it and see. When program runs and the grade is received, so in here I'm going to say, for example, C, and I hit enter, okay? when it's received and I, and I come over here, take a look what happens. So it, it comes to switch statement, it sees the grade as C, and from here it jumps to the case that C is there. So it checks the value of grade for equality for all these things. That's why switch should never be used with floating point values. Because floating point values, sometimes they look the same, but they're not. Like one is 2.2 and the other one is 2.1999999999. So when you print them, they are both 2.2, but when you check them, they are not the same. So switch is only checked for equality to make sure they are exactly the same. And you cannot put a condition in there. You can't say case A is greater than 5. That's not going to work that way. It has the value inside case must match the value inside the switch value, switch's value. So therefore, from that grade, because I have C, it actually jumps right to, oh, I didn't have a C. What was the thing? Oh, it was a lowercase C. That's a good point. Because it's lowercase, it didn't actually work. It's got to say you got to watch much, work much harder. We'll fix that bug. Don't worry. Okay? Let's run it one more time. Good thing we actually saw a bug, which is very okay. So now I'm going to put capital C. Is it? There you go. Capital C. Now, now it actually jumps to that case, as you see, and it says okay and comes out. Are we okay with this? And if it's neither of those, it goes to default. Are we okay with this? So what do I do? Uh, and let me try something, show you what break does over here. Break essentially breaks the execution of switch and jumps to the end. So if you forget to put break over here, see what happens. I'm, I'm removing the break from the, the statement, and in here I'm going to enter C again. So it jumps to C, it prints OK, but there is no break to send it to the end of switch so it continues with the next case and then it breaks we actually use that as our advantage what do we do in here i'm going to put the break but for case i'm going to put two cases back to back and also I'm going to change that to invalid grade. So now, for these, this one, I can put lowercase a. For this one, I can put lowercase b, lowercase c, lowercase d, and, oh, I have two d's. Oh, this is f and f. 
So now, by doing this, if it's either capital A or lowercase a, it will jump to that case. So now, if I run the program, it's got to be more uh, uh, precise. So now, if I actually put over here B, it's going to come to grade, flush the key, obviously. It's lowercase b jumps to that case and says, very good. And if I yeah, uh, so let's actually make this program work better. So what I'm going to do over here, so uh, I'm going to change it as usual to a function. So uh, that message that I'm showing, it's going to be a function that uh, sends a message based on grade. Great. So I'm going to say grade message, I call it. So I'm going to call this grade message. That receives a character grade. And I'm going to put everything in here because I want to have the example run over and over. And as you see, as I kind of knowingly ignored the default at the end the break at the, after the default. Because if there is no break, it's going to go to the end of switch anyway. Who cares, right? If you have the default in the middle of the switch, which you shouldn't, it's ugly, then put a break. But if it's at the end, then who cares, right? So that's the great message that I have. Let me put it at the bottom so, it, so I don't have to see it. It's not in front of my face. OK. <clears throat> and then I want to keep continuing, uh, keep getting the thing. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, enter the grade. So in here, I'm going to say do. And in here, I'm going to say while, yes. In here, I'm going to say grade message. And I'm going to put the grade. In here, I'm going to say printf, continue. And I'm going to say over here, yes or no. And I'm going to have a function called yes that returns true if user presses y. OK? Make my life easy so I don't want to, OK? St try to always uh, turn your program into compartments. Makes your life easier. Always, like you wanted to say, I wanted the user to actually say y or, or actually that yes thingy, uh, no, that continue is a message. So continue is a message, but yes or no is supposed to be in yes or no, not here. So I don't need to put that one over there. So I'm going to say continue. Yes is going to actually say yes or no. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to write the function. The function return, return an integer, which is either 0 or 1. And it's not going to get anything, so it's void. And let's write the function. So in here, I'm going to say int yes. And I'm going to say um, void. And in here, I'm going to say character. Uh, Reply, and I'm going to say uh, get a reply, and I'm going to just immediately say get care. So I'll get it, get the character, and put it in a reply, and then I'm going to say over here if, if and in here I'm going to have an integer result, and I'm going to say if reply is equal to yes, or reply is equal to lowercase yes, then result is true. Oh, this is not C++. Result is 1. And otherwise, result is false, and return result. 
Okay? And I'm going to flush the key after that. Flush key. Okay, so now if it is, if they put anything other than uh, Y, it's going to assume it's no and it's going to return uh, zero. So um, again, as soon as you write your programs like that, then when I'm doing yes, I don't care if the message is, how the message is printed. Believe me, getting used to create small functions instead of doing everything from scratch frees your mind. Not freeze, it will free your mind, <laughs> okay? It will free your mind because at that moment, you're only thinking about that accomplishment. That is a small portion of the big thing you're supposed to do. Therefore, your brain is not going to go haywire, okay? So always remember that. Now, of course, this yes is not the best thing to do. I'm going to actually make it even better. So, um, oh, so I cannot actually do it here. I have to do it here because I'll have to show the message. I forgot about that. Now in here, I'm going to say printf. Yes or no. And now I'm going to get the rep. Okay? So running this program, I'm just going to run it first and then see uh, how everything works. So first run it, and then I'm going to go through it. So it's going to enter a grade. I'm going to say A. It's going to say excellent. Continue. I'm going to push Y. That's yes being called. Okay? Enter a grade. I'm going to say F. You need to watch, work much harder. Now I'm going to say yes again. Enter a grade. I'll put G. It's going to say invalid grade. Continue yes or no. So I need a new line over there to make it look better. I'm going to fix it right away. And I'm going to say no, and it's going to exit and come out. Okay, so now let's walk through it and see how it worked. Okay, so <clears throat> all this is again uh, always run create your functions easiest way you can. Don't try to make it complicated. That yes thing, if somebody puts G, it's going to accept as no, correct? <laughs> Instead of yes, because it only checks capital Y, right? If you want it to actually only get yes or no, then you have to put that thing inside the loop, make sure everything is good, print an error message, tell them only yes and no words. I don't want to go there. For now, I'm just writing the yes as is. When, I'm, when my knowledge gets bigger, better, I'm going to go back, and I have free time, I'll go back, and I just change the contents of yes. And as soon as I do that, then all my programs using yes will work better because that's the function that is working that way, okay? <clears throat> and it's a very important thing to do. And because this yes is actually something very useful, I'm going to actually add it to my utility stuff. So I'm going to take it out of here and put it in my utilities so I can use it somewhere else. So in future examples that I have, I'm going to use my yes function again. And... <clears throat> I don't need the prototype because not, nothing is using yes in here, but add it at the top just in case. If something uses it, then it's fine. And I have the prototype in here too, so everything is good. So it's going to use the yes from the utils file, which is fine. Not, no, no difference, no biggie. So let's continue. Stop, and I'm going to uh, uh, run again. Comes in, grade is garbage, says print, uh, uh, get the get grade, and does get, get care, and gets the character over there, enter grade. So I'm going to put over here X, and I hit enter. Grade becomes, grade becomes X. It flushes the key, which means that one backslash N will be removed from the key. We've, we know that from last time. I'll walk through it anyway. It comes over here, <coughs> it makes chx, who cares? ch is not equal to backslash and keep getting characters. The very first one that it's getting is new line, so it comes out. Keyboard is clean, clean passes the grade that is x to grade message. <coughs> 
it is x, x comes over here, none of these is x, so it jumps to default. Prints invalid grade and gets out of the function, prints continue, then while statement wants to check and see if this is true or false. To do that, it has to execute S. Uh, yes, therefore yes will be executed. <clears throat> you can do that for all functions. Any function that returns a value, not void functions, any function that returns a value and corresponds to yes or no, you can actually do that. So it actually calls yes now, comes in here, prints yes or no, and waits for the user to get a character. In here, I'm going to say yes, capital Y, hit enter. It comes in here. The condition becomes true because uh, rep is capital Y. Results become 1. 1 is returned. And 1 is considered to be true, so while continues, and it goes on and on. Are we OK with this? Yes. No, that's the thing. No condition is allowed. Switch is very primitive, and I'll tell you why. Switch is very primitive. There are no conditions, but it's much, much faster than an if statement. For an if statement to check, if it was written with an f, else, f, else, elf, every single condition has to be checked until something is met. And if it's not met, everything is checked and the last one. So how many conditions have to be checked? A lot, correct? So that's very, very slow. When I say very slow, one is one billionth of a second, the other one is two billionth of a second, OK? But that matters when you are writing a game and the characters are running around and each character's rendering on a screen is billion calculations. So if that's the case with a switch, because there is no condition, it literally jumps to the labor and goes out. Because of that, they don't allow you to put any condition to make it fast. It is only to check equality. Okay, and this is a trick that we put two cases back to back. Case was not designed for that. We use that side effect of removing the break to simulate an and, but there is no and. You cannot have an or, as you said. Are we okay? Are we okay down to this one? Huh? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to teach you something new, actually, about that, about utilities. OK. And so yes is there, and utils is here. <clears throat> so it, you see that I'm actually using this yes and flush key from utils. And every time I want to do that, I have to keep remembering which thing I have to bring in, right? You can fix that by putting all the prototypes of the utils in a file and ask C to bring copy and paste all that file here. So C++ C compiler does that for you. And when I say copy and paste, I literally mean that. I'll demonstrate, OK? So this program is now, we call it, what do we call this, prg.c, I'm going to call it a switch. So b switch in a loop. So let me create a new file. I'm going to add a new file. And I'm going to call that abc.xyz. Complete garbage. abc.xyz. Now, 
I'm going to create another one, new item, and I'm going to call that he dot hon. Okay. Are we okay with this, though, those two files? In abc.xyz, I'm going to say include standard input output dot h, h, then int main void. That's it. Is that a valid C program? No, it's garbage, correct? I save that. And I'm going to go to that hee thingy of mine. And in here, I'm going to say printf what the heck? And go to new line. And in here, I will say return 0. And I'm going to close the curly bracket. So when you look at these two guys over here, Together, they are a complete C program. You see that? It says include.h, int main void, printf what the heck, return zero, correct? But just like that, it's not. They are just two separate files, correct? Now, in here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come to prg.c, and I'm going to say, Copy and paste Why did you stop it? Okay. <laughs> okay. So in here I'm gonna say I'm gonna say ABC. I'm gonna say copy and paste ABC dot XYZ. And in here I'm gonna say copy and paste he dot huh. Compile and run. And I get what the heck? Why? Because include is literally a copy and paste before compilation. So I literally asked the compiler, copy and paste here, this one, in this include. So it copies and pastes that one. Then I'm going to say copy and paste this one when this include is there. And the outcome is a complete C program. Do we understand what include does? Include is nothing but a copy and paste. So how do we take advantage of this? I'm going to save this actually as what the heck. <laughs> so I'm going to say, what do I do over here? I'm going to say, let's remove this, move this. Save as. Uh, see what the heck dot C which in parentheses is include. <laughs> OK? So now, let's come back over here. So, uh, and I'm going to actually, you don't even need to add them to your solution. Take a look. I can ju I'm just going to remove them. You see that? They're not even here. As long as they are hard in a hard drive. In the current directory, it doesn't matter. It runs. See? It doesn't have to be anywhere. Include doesn't care if something is here or not or whatever. As long as the path is correct and it can find that file, it copies and pastes it for you. That's all. Do we all understand this? Are we all okay? Okay. So now that I do that, I'm going to actually play, play in a sane type. So uh, what I will do, I, although I don't need to, but to be organized, I'm going to add a new item in here. And I'm going to call that utils.h. Remove that pragma once over there, too rich for our blood. And utils.h is a header file for my utils file. So all I do in here, I'm going to copy all the 
prototypes of the functions in there and save it. Okay? So now, because all my goodies are in utils.c, if I want to use them, all I need to do over here is to say include, but with double quotes, not that thing, utils.h. It literally copies and pastes those prototypes in your file. You okay? And we're going to make it a little juicier the next time. Okay? This might cause trouble sometimes. But, and remember, one thing you have to remember that is extremely important, you should never, ever include a header file inside a header file. You should not have include standard input output dot h in utils dot h ever. Only the prototypes you have. Okay? Keep that in mind. And you have it. So now you can carry that utils around with you. Actually, when you look at the submission of your codes, I am telling you that you can have your custom code submitted. If it's not in workshop three, you have workshop three, right? Three workshops, right? If you don't have it in workshop three, you got to have it in workshop four. From now on, every workshop you have option to submit your code with the utils module. module. We call that a module, uh, uh, a C file with a header file. Together, we call it a module. These are all your goodies. These are, you're a plumber, and that's your toolbox. You're a carpenter, and that's your toolbox. You're a mechanic, and that's your toolbox. Wherever you go, you can carry it with you. In your workshop, you have a choice. If you want to, you can carry your old functions in utils.c and reuse it in functions if you want. And as you make your utils better and better over time, your functions are going to work much better and better as we go. So that's that. So from now on, I'm just going to, what is that? Oh. I think I did it in the, uh, in the old one. Um, IPC, not the dev. We want to go here. Notes here. <coughs> And I think uh, it was not what the heck, it was switching a loop. That's the one. Copy. So it is tradition, as, I, as you see, you include, it is tradition to include the header file of each utility, uh, of each function in its own C file. So all the functions are introduced to each other. But if I want to actually use that in my program, I can use it over there too. So instead of print message, I need. That's a function that is here. It has nothing to do with my utils. So that's there. But flush and yes, and if I wanted to get an integer, then, then it would be include. Uh, utils.h. As a matter of fact, when you are getting a character, you always need to flush after. So if you want to get a single character, you can actually write your own function, okay, and put it in utils to get a character. You can do that and flush it so you don't have to write two things over here. So uh, I can come over here and write something like character get single character void, and in here I'll simply say uh, character ch is equal to get char, oh, 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 get char, that was a different one, and then I can say uh, uh, flush key, and say return ch. So if I want a single character, I'm going to write get single character. And I'm going to add these now to my utils.h. And now I can actually use it. So anytime I want a single character, I'm not going to keep asking for two things in here. I'm going to say great is equal to get single character. Right? 
And I think I have it, uh, even in yes, I can do that. I think yes does the same thing. So I'm going to go back in utils. In yes, I'm doing the same thing, so I don't need to flush in here. I can simply say get single character. Oh. And then save it. Done. And it works the same way, it's just more beautiful. Okay? Are we okay with this? Please use your imagination. At any moment when you want to do something and you see there are too many things to think about, group it under a name, make it a function, procrastinate, write it later. Just call the function, create an empty prototype immediately. If you can write it simply, write it simply. If you cannot write it simply, just write an empty function with the signature that it has and call it. Continue when you're done with your logic, then go back, solve that sub-problem of yours. That's how programming is done in C language. Are we okay down to this point? <clears throat> so that switch statement, uh, let's talk about Bruno. Let's talk about, uh, let me just, uh, one more time. Yeah, it works. Control. So as practice, if you want to practice, get these utils. First of all, you can use my utils. I'm your prof. You can use my utils, no problem. Secondly, uh, get these and make it better. And when you make it better, tell me you did, and I'm going to add it to my utils, and I'm going to add your name, developed by this person. Okay? Anything in here you think, get int if it, if after the workshop is done. If you have done it and you think your code is efficient and nice, let me know. I'll add yours and I'm going to say, contribute it by this person. Okay? And you're going to have it in there. And everybody can use it. Are we okay down to this point? Now, let's talk about formatting. We need to learn how to properly format stuff with printf. But we're going to do that after these messages, which means go for a break. <laughs> so now, how do we format in, format our output in, uh, in C? So this one is, I'm going to say over here, uh, D, use of header files, custom header files. Later on, uh, I, oh, why did I put .h? Ugh. I'll fix it. I'll fix it later. Well, hmm, I know I'll forget, so <laughs> give, me, give me a second. Okay. So in, as you see, I leave my uh, utils over there, even if I'm not using it, in case I use it. Because having prototypes up there doesn't hurt. Doesn't make any difference, right? So in here, I'm going to say int main void. I keep forgetting that. Return 0. Where does the re 0 return? When, where does 0 get returned to? Where does zero go to? You're, you just said it. Operating system. Remember that. Operating system. Zero goes back to operating system. OK, let me show you something. One, two, three, four, five. You see that? Right? I'm going to compile this. Compile and run. Nothing happens, see? Because I didn't do anything. You see that? Nothing happens, right? Now I'm going to open a command line. Because we know functions, we need to know those answers. And uh, uh, this is the path of my folder, copy. So I'm going to go, uh, I think I'm on D, C, D. That's the path. Oh. 
Um, and debug uh, OX64 CDX64 and CD debug. This is the executable. You see February 7th EXE. You see that? Okay. Let me clear it. Oh, sorry. I do, do that. And, you know, anyways. So in here, I'm going to say uh, 0. Um, 7 February 7 EXE, right? It just got executed, correct? Echo. One, two, three, four, five. You see that? So it gets, so somebody who writes a program to execute different programs can get messages from your program after its execution. So you write a manual. If Two was returned, this happened. If 92 was returned, that happened. If zero is returned, has. So you, you give them a manual, and the guy looks at the manual, then they can write actually a program that runs your program and make sure everything ended properly. Got it? And that one in Linux, I think, is dollar sign underline or dollar sign number sign. I don't remember what it was, but that's in Linux. In Linux, the uh, that variable name is a different thing. In, in uh, DOS is error level, or Windows, whatever you call it. So now we know. So that is return to operating. I keep asking that for you not to forget, and always that lady answers and no one else. OK, so, <laughs> so are we OK? All right. How to format things? Let's start with integers. Integer val. And I'm going to set it to 1, 2, 3, 4. OK? So the first thing, how to print in a specific space. I can say printf. And in here, I'm going to put a star before percent %d and a star after percent %d just to see what are the boundaries of my printing. And as you see, minus 1, 2, yeah, I forgot to put the value. <laughs> Sorry about that. Printed garbage. So that's one, two, three asterisks. Okay? Are we good about that? Are we okay? No problem? All right. So, how do we print that in specific? Like, if you want to build a table and have everything organized and you have different values, you want that number to get printed in a specific space. How do we do that? Like row numbers and stuff. It's like this, printf. I'm going to change that asterisk over there to an arrow like that. OK? I'll tell you why later on. OK? So now if I say over here, percent %10d, it means print that integer in 10 spaces. And if I run the program, as you see, it is in 10, 10 spaces now. Are we good? Now, what if you want it to be left justified, not right justified? How do you do that? You put a dash right before. Are we OK? And you run it. And that's that. So now it's left justified. So you want it in these spaces and left justified. I'll pause it. Offline, there you go. So to fill with zeros at left, you put a zero at left side. OK? To fill with zero at left, you put a zero at left side. So now this one is actually printing the value with leading zeros. Are we OK with that? Now, if you want the leading zeros, go to up to certain things. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I want only up to 7 to go with leading zeros and the rest be empty. If that's the case, you put 0.7 here, I believe. Oh, let me copy it. There you go. Okay? 
That's all you need to do with integers. So you can print it any way you want. Are we okay with this? Yes. Huh? Then you have to write a function of your own. Okay? <laughs> all right. And there is another thing that you need to know. The format that you put over here, you can always make it a variable, which is this. Take a look. So if I say for integer, oh, integer w, so I'm going to say, oh, and also another thing I have to mention before that, <clears throat> the size of the integer, the size of the value supersedes the request for length. So if I say percent 3D or 2D, if I say percent 2D, it doesn't care. It's going to print the 4. It shows the value. It's, the value is more important than your formatting. Okay, you should have your formatting in a way that all values fit. If you want to truncate it short, then you have to write a program for it yourself. <clears throat> and finally, all the things you put over here can be done like this. I can say for with set to say, uh, what is it? For, I'm going to say for and with less than 50 and with plus plus. I can do this. I can say printf. Let me bring it. So I can have this. 50 is too much. I'll go 15. Okay. You can take this out and put an asterisk. Okay. And then put the W in here if I, th if I am right. Let me see. Because asterisk comes before D. Let's see. You see that? Okay. So you can put that. Uh, I, put, I should have started with 5. No, four, 4 is correct, OK? So what happens is that asterisk comes first, so it puts the W, puts for the asterisk. If it's 4, it's 4. If it's 10, it's 10. So you can change it. You set how to put it in the middle, <clears throat> OK? With that, you can adjust how much the width is. Then you have to see what is the total divided by 2, print space after, OK? That's a good practice. Okay, write a printf statement that actually prints in a center. It's a very tough thing to do, actually. Okay, so that's formatting an integer. Are we okay? All right. And all integers, um, long, short, all of, the, all of the integers are, are the same way. Floating points. <clears throat> when I say floating point, double, float, all of them are the same. Double. So you do printf, percent, uh, so I'm going to do it like that, percent lf is what we printed with, correct? And then in here, you put the value. So that's the first thing we're going to do. That's our printout. Right? You already know how to shorten the digits after the decimal point. We know that we can have something like this. Point 4LF, and it only shows four digits after the decimal point. Correct? We know that already. And you know that it actually rounds it because it's 8, 9. The, the 8 will be rounded to 9 because the, right, the next one is, you know that, right? So to actually set the width, set the width, you put the first one too. So I'm going to say 10 point, say 2 LF. It means I want it in 10 spaces with two digits after the decimal point. Total is 10. 
the number is four and two digits after the decimal point. Are we okay with this? All right? So when you have a, like 1.99, if you want to put point 0.2 for a one digit double, you need four spaces for it. One is the digit, one is the dot, two is after the decimal point. Got it? Okay? And left justification works the same way. So I'm going to make it 20. Obviously, 0 is that. You fill it with 0, right? I do not know how to limit the number of zeros and doubles. <laughs> that I know only for four thing. I don't know if it's possible or not. If it is, let me know. And to do left justification, you put it left over here. All right? Are we okay with this? And then you can have uh, integer with integer and, and D, let's call it. Then in here, uh, I'm going to put uh, uh, one for this one and uh, 10 for this one. So I'm going to say 4, uh, W set to 10, and W less than 15, and W plus plus. Now in here, I'm going to say 4, D set to 1, and D less than, say, 3, and D plus plus. Okay, so I have a W that goes, so 5 is there, 3 is here, 15 lines total. I'm good. So in here, I'm going to say now printf <coughs> percent star point star LF. So in here, I'm going to put the width, the decimal points, and the value over here. And do this. So all these can be programmed. And a new line. Right? You see that what, ha what happens, right? So, oh, well, how far did I go in here? I said one, two, three. Uh, I'll go zero to three. Yeah, and to, to just show you what happens, what's happening over here, I'm going to say printf, and I'm going to put some dashes, and go to new line. So you see each repetition. All right? So the first one is the width of whatever it is, with going from 0 to 2, and the other one is uh, getting bigger, and as you see, the width is getting bigger and the same. So are we okay with this? So that's all of, pardon me? Oh, so see, oh, to, to, oh yes, 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 of course, of course, of course. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do to make it more visible, I'm going to say plus equal two in here to kind of make the width go wider. And uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do exactly what you said. Give me a second. So this one comes here and this one comes here. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Plus plus worked and plus equal two didn't? Oh no, it worked perfectly, yeah, yeah. So the first one, uh, so, and to show you exactly what, what went over here, I'm gonna say printf uh, w is percent d, and d is percent d, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to say percent, because I don't want it to, um, yeah, this is all, all two digits, fine. So in here, and in here, I'm going to put W and D. So we see exactly what the width and what the, and what the, <laughs> I'm 
Okay, thank you. I think we're good. Let's run it one more time. There we go. There we go. So that's width of uh, <laughs> 10, and D starts from 1, 2, 3. Okay, then uh, awful. Awful example. Let me just do it one more time. That's better. And I have to hit enter over here. There you go. So <clears throat> 10 and 0 is this. 10 and 1 is this. 10 and 2 is this. 12 and 0. 12, 1, 12, 2. And so on and so forth. OK? Yes. No. No. It's just space holders. What did you get that word from? Shush. Nobody listened to what he said. No, they're just, they're just space holders. So when you, the first asterisk, the first value goes to. The second asterisk, the second value, LF val goes to. It's exactly like regular printf. Just asterisk is placeholder like LF. Pointer is something we're going to learn, I think, after midterm, and you're going to kill me for that. OK, that's not the one. No, no, that's not the one. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Asterisk. Why didn't you say that's multiplication? <laughs> All right. So yeah, what I'm saying is that, yeah, those are just placeholder in format specifiers. So when you put an asterisk in format, format between percent and uh, the thing, you, it replaces the values. That's why I put the thing at the top. So it's actually 20.2 LF. You can say asterisk point asterisk. And instead of 20 and 2, you can put values if you want to, if you want it to change. If you don't want to, just use the constant ones. It just shows you that, that that's the case. So these are all the things that we have. So that's how printf works with all the integer values and regular values. And these work exactly the same way. So that's floating point. So in here, I'm going to say, oh. Man, um, this is E. OK, so this is F. Integers, and that's, uh, that's uh, floating. OK, let me just bring that old thing up that we did with uh, Printing integers, I'm going to copy that. <clears throat> so it works the exact same way for characters. So if I have character ch is set to, say, at sign, something like that, it's just percent %c, c, c, c. I don't know if this will work or not. I'm just going to try it. We'll just try it and see if it works or not. I do not know if it works or not. If it works, I learned something new, too. Oh, that's Val. Why am I doing it? So it's CH. No. There we go. So it works the exact same way for characters. I don't know why I have two dashes thingies over there. I'll remove one. <clears throat> and that 0, 07 doesn't work, so I'll remove that. That doesn't work for it. So that's characters. There you go. OK? So <clears throat> that's it. So you can do it with characters. And we have something for strings, too, C strings. So I'll show you that one, too, and then we're done. So if else over here, so I'm going to say EFG and formatting uh, characters. <clears throat> Uh, 
Oh, strings uh, example for it will be a kind of irrelevant with what we have here, but so for strings you put s. You don't know how to contain strings yet. We're going to learn later, but in here I can set put over here uh, x x y z. So you can actually print a string to. We still don't know how to put variables to hold strings. That's later. That's a completely different thing. Uh, and it works the exact same way. OK? <clears throat> All right? So if you need to put let, later on when we learn where we can hold actually a string, you know what the formatting is. They are all the same. Uh, and that's that. So formatting with printf is done. We know it now. Any questions? Yes. You can use anything you want, my dear. You you did something wrong in that for loop then. GCC won't won't be picky. Please get see me online and we'll go through it together. Or if you have it on your computer after the class. <laughs> if you're right, are you are, do you have the name of the variable inside? Are you writing integer i is equal to zero inside for loop? No, so something is fishy. I have to take a look at it. It's impossible for one work and the other don't. There's some syntax error happening. No doubt about that, OK? You're allowed to use anything you want, anything you want in your C programs, as long as you know exactly what they are. Don't go find some functions from somewhere and just put it over there. If I see there is a function that I didn't teach, I'm going to ask you, explain what is that. If you can't explain, zero. You have to know what you're using. Don't use it randomly, OK? You got to tell me, this function is doing this and that, and I'm good. I thank you. You're a good student. You're stud self-studying C. I, I love that, OK? But you need to actually uh, know what it's done. So. What else? Let's work on some logic. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we need to do is to be able to, to, be able to uh, find maximum and minimum of stuff, OK? Those are all done simply with if statements, very simply, OK? Uh, we didn't have anything like that in our workshop, finding maximum and minimum, did we? I don't think so. OK, but how do we do, like, how do we get series of information from user and we can find out which one was the biggest entry? So this is how it's done. So, so I have a, so uh, first of all, you have to have some kind of a, a container to, uh, to hold the largest value, OK? And let's ask user to enter 10 integers for us. So I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to say printf, enter 10 integers. And I want to find out what was the largest and later on smallest value that user entered. So the value of integers are going to go in, in num that I'm going to get. And I'm going to have a counter to count how many things, how many times the user actually running it. I'm going to use a for loop over here saying for counter, seriously, counter set to 0, uh, counter less than 10, and counter plus plus. <clears throat> and I'm going to start showing a prompt. We've done this 50 times. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to say in here, uh, assuming that user actually enters a proper thing every time. So I'm going to say printf. And um, let's make that 15 times. Or, yeah, 15 times. OK? And then 
in here I'm going to say percent 2D to actually show the in 2 and I'm going to add a 0 to left so it fills the left with 0 so the row numbers look nice and uh, uh, organized. So that's my prompt. It shows the prompt and I'm going to put the counter over here. Counter plus 1. Okay. So I'm going to show the counter one by one and I'm going to start getting the integers. So I'm going to say <coughs> Uh, let's find the average to just for the heck of it. Integer sum to find the average and sum. So sum should be zero because we are starting from the beginning. Uh, so in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, sum is equal to get int. I'm not going to get an integer like that. This is easier, right? We already wrote it in utils, so I'm going to use that one. I'm going to get an integer and put it in sum. We know that if we want to find the average and stuff, I, oh, sorry, num. I'm going to say over here num plus e, uh, sum plus equal uh, num, okay? And at the end, I can simply say C, oh, printf, uh, I can say printf uh, uh, sum is percent D and average is percent, I can do LF, let's give exact average with uh, two uh, digits after the decimal point for precision or, <clears throat> or something like that. And then in here, I'm going to, if, uh, if yeah. So if that's the case, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you, teach you something new too uh, in expression. So <clears throat> average and then uh, I'm going to print the sum, and average will be sum divided by counter, correct? Right? Are we okay with this? <clears throat> no, because when counter comes out, it has actually the number. That, so let's say it's three. Let's make it easy. Okay? For the for loop to break, what should be the value of counter? Right? So it is, it is, it reached to three, that's why it's broken. So I'm going to make it three for now just. So if I run the program now, so if I run the program now, I'm going to go to right and, uh, <clears throat> oh. 10 integers, I didn't go to new line, let me fix that. Stop and run. Hmm. Okay, so run one more time. So now in here I'm gonna put, I don't know, one, uh, five, and seven. Okay, so average is zero, of course, because I have an integer over here and I'm printing a float, a double, correct? How do I temporarily change this to a double? You know that if I have a double, you don't know that, but if you read the expressions and types, you know that whenever you have an expression between two types, one is the bigger will be the type of outcome. So if I have a, a short integer and an integer, the outcome, if I say a plus b, one is short, the other one is integer, the outcome will be integer. If I have a long and a character, I add them, the outcome is long. If I have a float and an integer, the outcome is float. If I have, <coughs> I don't know, a uh, float and an uh, a double uh, and an integer, the outcome is uh, double. That's what it is, right? So I can actually temporarily ask the compiler to change the type of a variable for me. How? It's called casting. In here, I can say, hey, could you please temporarily change this sums type to a double? So what happens, sum that has the sum of everything as an integer temporarily will change to a double value. And double divided by an integer is a double. Therefore, double will be printed. This is called casting. So now if I actually run the program, you will see that it actually gives me the precise thing. So one, three, and seven. 
it actually gives me 3.67. It actually shows me the exact average as it's supposed to be. Are we okay with this? Okay, now how do we find out maximum and minimum in here? To find the largest one, what I need to do is this. To actually find the largest value, uh, what you need to do is, I wanted to write over there, but I can't. Um, I need to bring a webcam with a USB thingy and put it over there. So another thing added to my luggage for the next time. All right, so, so, um, uh, the heck with it, I'll write it, okay? So when you have series of numbers that you are getting, what you need to find out which one is the largest, you should have a variable separate, and that's largest, right? Okay? Then you have to either put an impossible value in there, impossibly small value, or set it to the first value that you are receiving. When I say impossibly value, it means if everything is supposed to be positive, put minus one in there. Minus one cannot be bigger than anything, correct? Well, because we don't have that, any value could be negative and positive, I put the first one in here. So when the first time I'm reading something, I'll put the two in here. The second time I'm reading, I'm going to compare. Is five greater than two? Yes, if that's the case, I'll change that to a five. Then I'll come to next. Is nine greater than five? Yes, I change that to a nine. Is two greater than nine? No, I'm not going to change. Is eight greater than nine? No, I'm not going to change. Is six greater than nine? No, I'm not going to change. Is five greater than nine? No, I'm not going to change. Therefore, I find the maximum of the numbers. You can do the exact same thing with the minimum. So how do we do it? First, we have to find out the first thing that is coming in. How do we do that? It's easy. Our counter has, our loop has a counter. And each one, when I'm at zero, it's the first time I'm receiving something, correct? So what I need to do as soon as I get the integer and sum and whatever you have, I'm going to say if counter is equal to zero, In here, I'm going to say first time loop running. I'm going to say largest will be equal to num. Correct? And I can even say over here, if I want a smallest, I can say smallest is equal to num. Doesn't matter. But largest. Did I write largest like that? Away says, yeah, why don't you correct me? <laughs> okay, so, so larger rather rest. Okay, so largest. So largest is set over there, now it becomes numb. But if it's not the first time, now I have to challenge that largest. I'm going to say if the num that I'm getting is greater than largest, then the largest is no longer largest, right? I have to override it with num. Otherwise, I don't do anything. And by the end of this loop, every single time, that testing will be done on the elements, and therefore, the biggest value will be kept as the largest value. All right? So, so yeah, so we run it. So. Did I, do I still have three over there, really? Anyways, uh, just I'll test it quickly, and then we're going to go after that. So one, five, and four. Average, I didn't, I found the largest, though, right? I forgot to print it. <laughs> okay, so let's print the largest in here. I'm going to say print. Print up. Percent D. Okay. So that's that. Mm. 
largest value. Yes, so that's going to find it. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Oh, it's 27. We have to go. The other class is going to come in. Darn it. I'm going to put five, quickly run it, and we'll continue the, the next day. Okay, there we go. So, oh, <laughs> too fast. One, two, three, four, five. And the largest is six, and it finds it. Okay, walk through it at home. See how it works using F10 key. And I think on your Apple, is it F6 or F7? You know what it is? On Xcode? You haven't tried? Oh, okay. Anyway, so uh, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'll let you know. Anyway, so but walk through it and see how it works. And uh, that's finding the largest value between the things. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it.